question begins by telling us how to form this particular isotope of fluorine. We've got this unknown nucleus X. So we need to know how many protons and neutrons there are in X. So let's keep track of the protons or the things with positive charge. On the right hand side we've got nine of them. So therefore we must have had nine protons or positive things on the left hand side. There's one proton on its own. But we need to have another eight of them. So where are the eight? The eight must be part of X. So X must have eight protons. And if we add up the total number of protons and neutrons, on the right hand side, the fluorine's got a total of 18 protons and neutrons, plus there's one more neutron, so that gives us 19 particles altogether, protons and neutrons. So X must have 18, because there's 18 protons and neutrons in X, plus the one proton that's on its own would give us a total of 19. So if X has got 18 protons and neutrons, 8 of them are protons, so 10 of them must be neutrons. Only one isotope of X produces this reaction. Explain what's meant by isotope. I always find it much more awkward to say what's meant by an isotope than to say what isotopes in plural are. So if I was answering this question, I wouldn't try to say what an isotope is, I would just say, what do we mean when we say that you know, things like a pair of isotopes? So I would say, isotopes are atoms that have the same number of protons and different numbers of neutrons. If you say that, you've, exp you've shown that you do understand what isotope means. Part B, determine the charge to mass ratio for this fluorine 18 nucleus, and it does explain it's in coulombs per kilogram. So, charge to mass ratio, we need to find the charge, find the mass. I'm not going to try and do it all in one equation because that would get confusing, so I'm going to work it out in separate stages. Charge equals, well there are nine protons, and we know that the charge on a proton is the same amount of charge as there is on an electron. And we can either remember the charge on an electron or we can look it up in the table. On the data sheet, but I'm just going to remember it, 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, which gives us an answer. 1.44 times 10 to the minus 18 coulombs. To find the mass of this nucleus, Well, I'm going to keep track of the protons and neutrons separately, just to sort of show that I really understand what's going on, even though it is actually possible to get the, the, the right answer with a shortcut. But exams are about showing that you know what's going on. So what's inside the nucleus? Nine protons. So the mass is nine times the mass of a proton. We'll look at the data sheet. 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 must also have we've got a total of 18 particles nine of them are protons, the other nine must be neutrons so it's nine times, and again on the data sheet I'll look at the mass of a neutron 1.675 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms which equals 3.01 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms so the ratio charge over mass three point zero one times ten to the minus twenty six. Now it's a schoolboy error. I've it the wrong way around. Ratio of charge over mass one point four four times ten to the minus eighteen divided by three point zero one times ten to the minus twenty six. 4.78 times 10 to the 7 coulombs per kilogram. The last part shows that the charge to mass ratio for the fluorine nucleus is larger than that of nucleus X. So there's two ways of doing it. We could go through this same procedure for nucleus X using the, the number of protons and neutrons that we've calculated. 
we get an answer. Let's see that the fluorine had a bigger value. But there's like a smarter way of doing it. The smarter way of doing it is to think about the, the difference between the two nucleuses. Both X and fluorine have got a total of 18 particles. They've got the same mass, near enough. But fluorine has got an extra proton. So fluorine has got more charge than X, but it's got the same mass. So if fluorine's got more charge than the same mass, it must have a bigger charge to mass ratio. So we actually don't need to do the working out, we just explain. The fluorine nucleus has got the same mass as X, it's got more charge, therefore it must have a bigger charge to mass ratio.